welcome again. Hell, is that real? Is that what the Bible teaches? You know, the stuff we hear about fire and all this kind of stuff. Is that really what the Bible teaches? Is that really what the, what Jesus himself taught? Let's read it. Luke chapter 16, verse 19. Now there was a certain rich man. He was clothed in purple and fine linen, living in luxury every day. Notice. Here we got a rich man who was living in luxury. Rich, well-clothed, luxury. Let's read on. A certain beggar named Lazarus was taken to his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. Yes, even the dogs came and licked his sores. The beggar died, and he was carried away by the angels to Abraham's bosom. That means right to Abraham's side, more or less. Right to Abraham's, right in Abraham's lap, so to speak. The rich man also died and was buried. Simply was buried. It doesn't say the angels came and took him. It doesn't say that he was taken to Abraham's bosom. It just said, basically, the rich man died and was buried. Just down. He just, it's just simple as that. Nothing is extraordinary about that. Verse 23. In Hades, or in hell, in hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torment. Torment. Notice that word torment. And saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his bosom. I'm going to stop here again. People in hell can see the people in heaven. People in hell can see the people in heaven. Verse 24, he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in anguish in this flame. Again, I have to stop here because this is so powerful. This man is in such torment, is burning so violently that he's begging for just a drop of water on his tongue. Begging for just a drop of water on his tongue. It's almost like the spirit of of that rich man stayed with the body, whereas the spirit of, the, of Lazarus was taken away by angels to heaven. Hmm. Verse 25, but Abraham said, son, interesting that he calls him his son, remember that you in your lifetime, now let me just stop here. It just, it just struck me now. Abraham said to the rich man, son, that, speaks volumes because it's commonly believed that Abraham's children are basically God's children or or, or those who are uh, inherit those who will inherit Abraham's blessings which is salvation so the rich man would have been a man who is known as Abraham's son equivalent to a very religious man today those who go to church for example a pastor, a priest, for example. Abraham called him his own son, but he's in hell. Okay, verse 25, let's read it again. But Abraham said, son, remember that you in your lifetime received your good things. Remember the clothes, the money, remember the luxury and Lazarus, in the same way, bad things. But here now, he, but here he is now comforted. Oh, oh, and you are in anguish. So we have a choice now. We can be comforted, comforted now, here and now, and later go to hell. Or we can be in not so comforted here and now. And go to heaven like Lazarus. 
Think about that for a minute. Think about that. It's almost like Lazarus was saying to the rich man, you've already had your heaven. And sadly enough, sadly, there are people alive today, many people, this pathetic earth in this pitiful world system that they're involved in, this sinful sin cycle that they're involved in, this dark world is the only heaven they will ever know. Verse 26. Besides all this, be between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed. Fixed. Okay. So that those who want to pass from here to you are not able, and, and there is no way to cross over from, uh, from there to us. Again, let's take note of this. The people in heaven and the people in hell can, can, can communicate at least a little. At least a little. They can see each other. But they cannot reach each other. They cannot touch each other. They cannot hug each other. They cannot comfort one another. The rich man was begging for just a drop of water to cool his tongue, but he couldn't, he couldn't get it. There's a great gulf fixed or like a great canyon, a great chasm between heaven and hell. Those who want to pass from heaven to hell, who would want to, <laughs> cannot. I mean, even if you, maybe you might want to, if you see a loved one there and you want to, you want to comfort them in some way or, you know, relieve them of their anguish and their torment. But, the, but you can't. And those who are in heaven cannot, or excuse me, those who are in hell cannot pass from hell to heaven. Once you're there, you're stuck forever. No way out. Point of no return. Let's read on. He, uh, he said, I ask you therefore, Father, this is the rich man speaking, that you would send him to my father's house. For I have five brothers that he may testify to them so they, they won't come into this place of torment. Another good point. The people in hell are praying for their loved ones not to come there. The people who are in hell are praying for their loved ones, that their, that their loved ones will not end up in hell. I've heard testimonies uh, of people who have said they have died, clinically died, and went and saw hell, and they said pretty much the same thing. People are praying there that their loved ones, their brothers, their father, their mother, their sons, their daughters, their cousins would not go there. This is the words of Jesus. These are the words in red. Let's, let's read some more. Let's learn some more. Verse 29. But Abraham said to him, but Abraham said to him, they have Moses and the prophets. They have the law of God. They have the Torah. Let them listen to them. Notice how Jesus is really putting a great focus on the Torah here. Verse 30. He said, No, Father Abraham, but if one goes to them from the dead, they will repent. By the way, there are many people today who have come back from the dead and that can testify of hell. And yet, people are so blind and so stupid and so caught up in their sin and their lifestyle that they won't even listen to them. They'll, they'll write it off. They'll, they'll say, oh, I don't believe it. Let's read verse 30 again. He said, no, Father Abraham, but if one go goes to them from the dead, they will repent. Let me tell you, there has been people who have come back from the dead. Probably in God's last, last efforts, last resort effort to answer the prayers of those who are in hell. 
perhaps to have a little bit of extra mercy upon those who are alive today. Sadly, again, a lot of people do not believe it. Let's read verse 31. He said to him, if they don't listen to Moses, this is what Abraham said, sorry, bud, but your prayer is not going to be answered. If they don't listen to Moses and the prophets, if they don't listen to the Tanakh, the Torah, the Nevi'im, neither will they be persuaded if one rises from the dead. Powerful, powerful truth here. If you do not believe and obey the, the Torah and the Nevi'im, okay, the Torah being the books of Moses and the Nevi'im being the prophets, if you don't go by that, if you don't read it and actually go by it and believe it, instead of, instead of excusing it or throwing it out or saying it doesn't apply today, Remember that we just read not too long ago, Jesus said, heaven and earth, all of heaven and all of earth will pass away before even one of the smallest letters of the Hebrew alphabet will pass from the God's law. God's law is more eternal, more secure, more durable than all of heaven and all of earth. Will never change. Never has, never will. If you don't go by that, if you cannot accept the Torah, and if you can't die to yourself and believe in Jesus, if you can't go by the Torah, you wouldn't be convinced even if someone rose from the dead to tell you. That's a sad truth. Also, let me just bring it out to you that this was approximately 2,000 years ago Jesus said this. This is not a parable. Jesus didn't say, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. The kingdom of heaven is like, a, you know, like yeast. He didn't say that here. He didn't say that at all. In fact, he said in verse 19, he said, there was a certain rich man. A certain rich man, and he was clothed, and a certain beggar. Verse 20. It's not a parable. It's not a, well, I'm telling you a parable, of trying to get you to understand some concept of God's kingdom here. No, this is a real true story. And by the way, that rich man that Jesus was talking about that was screaming in torment, wanting someone to... to, to, to just drop a little drop of water in his, in, on his tongue to, to comfort him. That same man has been screaming in torment, lo, these many 2,000 years. Today, as you hear my voice, he's still screaming. Today, as you hear my voice, many people perhaps, probably, more than likely, a lot of your loved ones and a lot of your friends are screaming in hell, praying for your soul. The gospel is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. In fact, he wrapped it up in the book of Malachi. In chapter 3, he said, I am the Lord. I change not. I am you. Hey, wow. Hey, I change not. He could have said, I am you. Hey, wow. Hey, you. Hey, wow. Hey, I will change my ways in a few years. In about 400 years, when Jesus comes along, I'll throw out everything and I'll change. I'm not going to be so, uh, so you know, wrathful anymore. He could have said that. Wrong. That is the implication of today's corrupt Christianity. It's heresy. God said over and over and over again, this is eternal. This is eternal. This is eternal. What does eternal mean? It's without time. It has no beginning or end. God's law is the express uh, representation of his character. God's law is part of God's character. God's law is, is, a, is a representation or a, an image of God's character. 
when you hear my voice, let's say you just hear my voice and say you don't see me. You can say, who is that? What's he saying? That's Christopher. Everything he says is, that's who he is. That's Christopher. The words of my mouth make up is, a, is an expression of my character. So God's commandments are an expression of his character. His character never changes. He never has need to change because he never makes a mistake. He's a perfect God. He's an eternal God. And he clarified it in Malachi saying, I am yod heh wow hey, I change not. I'm not going to change. Never, ever, ever. Same yesterday, today, and forever. You need to repent. Get on your face before God. Ask him for power to overcome sin. Who's the one who overcomes? Who's the one? We overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of the testimony. What's the blood of the lamb? What's that all about? The blood of the lamb right from the very beginning in Genesis all the way to now. The blood of the lamb is the power to give you power over sin. The power to repent. When that lamb is sacrificed, you look at that lamb and you say, I am crucified with that lamb. I am sacrificed with that lamb. When that lamb dies, my sin dies. That's the whole... Uh, even Jews, Jews today, even rabbis today say that's what the purpose of sacrifices were for was for. That was the purpose of sacrifices. To look upon it, to identify with it, so that your sin would be annihilated. To give you a catalyst, empowering your, your repentance. That's what the blood of the Lamb is for. That's what Jesus died for. He died to give you power to live right, holy, just, according to the law of God. He died to give you power over sin, to break the chains of bondage. He rose again so that you can rise with him in newness of life. And that's what truly, that's what really being born again is. Not saying a sinner's prayer at church. It's got nothing to do with that. In fact, most people who say sinner's prayers, the sinner's, the sinner's prayer is not born again. There may be a few that are. I mean, I'm not going to say there are no exceptions, but from the general rule, they're not. I don't care how many times the, the preacher says, well, you're born again now. Listen, if you're born again, you don't, have, you don't need anybody to tell you that you're born again. When you, when, all, when you have completely changed, when all of the old is gone, all of the old attitude is gone, all of the old sin is gone, all of the old way of thinking is gone, and the new has come, and you're brand new creation in Christ, you know it. You don't have to have anybody tell you. When the Spirit of Almighty God, the same Spirit that created the universe, comes to dwell in you, you know it. It's not. It's not unannounced to you. <laughs> you know it. As you go your way, repent. Walk in repentance every day. Preach righteousness. As Daniel chapter 12 says, those who lead many to righteousness will shine like the sun. Shine like the stars of heaven. And I pray that every one of you would be. Every one of you that, that listen to me, every one of you within the sound of my voice would be a star in heaven, shining forth the righteousness, teaching people to be righteous according to the law of God and keeping them out of the place called hell, keeping them out of the place called Hades. Keeping their spirit out of there. Keeping their soul out of there. Answering the prayers of many of your loved ones. Answering the prayers of many of their loved ones. Because you know, there are people in hell that are praying for you right now. Don't forget. Please, if there's any comfort you can give them, if there is any comfort that anybody can ever have in hell, that is knowing that one of their loved ones has truly turned from sin, changed their lifestyle, 
and now lives for God in righteousness and in the Spirit of God. Do so in the name of Yeshua. As Jesus said, go and sin no more.